bastard sermon, you motherfuckers. Welcome to another episode of the Bastard Sermon. I'm one of your two hosts, Cody Hucker. And Luke, yeah. And this week, we've got on Tiff Coleman and Steve Worth. This episode's been a long motherfucking time coming. They've been on the Patreon, if you guys have been supporting us on that. But uh, they should have been on this uh, this actual like free cast forever ago. Thank you guys for joining me in my grandpa's basement. Tiff talks so they know what you sound like. Yo, yo, what's up? That's Tiff. And Steve talks so they know what you sound like. Welcome, folks. That's fucking Steve. <laughs> Steve's got an excellent radio voice. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you're just going to diff Tiff immediately? Really, it's a janitor voice, Luke. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying like, hey, fuck, fuck Tiff and, and his non-radio ass sounding voice. I just said <laughs> Steve in particular has a radio sounding voice. Steve's got a good radio voice because he has to be the DJ when he goes to strip clubs because he's too shy around naked bitches. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. We were just talking about this. Wrong. We were Zing. actually we were talking about this off the mic. So Steve's actually like scared around naked Give me women. Cause what? What do you need? Lighter. All right, I got you. So you're you're nervous around naked women, dude? Uh, you know it can be intimidating. I that's fucking, for sure. I feel it, man. I was definitely nervous my oh. first time around boobies too. <laughs> right, bro. I, it's a new experience. <laughs> I've never dealt with it before. <laughs> I can't remember. We did the Patreon. Did I tell you about the whore party? Tell oh us again. There's a whore party. Even if you did, tell oh us again. Buddy. All right, man. So yeah, you're in for a that. treat. Whore party <laughs> sounds Christ. sick. <laughs> it's for the children. Anyway, so it's a fundraiser. Yeah, love you, babe. <laughs> anyway, so there's a party every year. It's been going on what 109 years now, something like that. The first year I went was like the 104th or something. I don't remember, but uh, my okay. buddy, ju- my- I thought I was about to learn that you're some sort of sorcerer that's been living for like like so long. <laughs> So okay, little, sorry. Yeah, Negro magic. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So every year it happens. It's uh, usually the Tuesday before opening day. Just a Tuesday because you know dudes lie to their fucking wives so they can go and not get questioned. But, can you uh, actually fuck at this party? I can't confirm or deny All these right. allegations. But so you uh, can totally fuck. But so <laughs> I'll confirm for for. Budwin Tiff. lived with us for a while, and he was like, <laughs> "T, do you want to go to the horror party with me?" And I'm like, "What? What the fuck are you talking about?" And I was like. He's like, it, it's strippers and free dinner and free beer. And I was like, uh, okay. And so I go completely having no idea what to expect. $75. They give you a free dinner. It's a free beer and a cash bar, right? So we go, and it's like me, Budwin, the dude he works with that took us. His name, I can't, I'm not going to say his name, but we go, and I walk up to the front having no idea what to expect. And it's us three and like 100 rich white dudes, right? So I walk How'd up. How did you know they were rich? Was it just like khakis and fucking like flannel t-shirts? But throughout the night, it became very apparent. But <laughs> so I walk up and this guy, it's this old white dude taking tickets and I give him my ticket. He's like, first time? And I'm like, yeah, don't really know what to expect. And he's like, <laughs> I personally guarantee you're going to have a good time. Otherwise, I'll give you your money back. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he's like, I was like, I really don't know what to expect. He's like, you can expect cold beer and hot pussy. I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> All right, man. So we go, <laughs> and we're sitting down at the table. We're just chilling or whatever. We go get pictures of beer. Everybody gets their own picture because, you know, that's the easiest way to do it. You don't, don't have to keep getting up. And, like, the girls are, like, walking around or whatever, normal clothes and all this shit. And Joe re- recognizes a couple of them from years past. And he's just like... Joe's the guy that took them. Yeah, so uh, Budwin's buddy. And he's, like, uh, talking to a bit shit. And one of them walks by and fucking sticks her tongue out at him. And he's like... Oh, put that tongue back in your mouth. And she's like, not yet. And he's like, oh, you dirty fucking whore, are you? And I'm like, what am I getting myself into? Jesus Christ. So, you, <laughs> My dick would have been rock hard right there. Immediately. <laughs> yeah. No there's question. a dude in the I back. I can't wait to fuck this, whatever dirty slut is about to come up <laughs> with. There's a dude in the back. An older dude. He's probably like 65, 70. And he's got a giant suitcase just full of singles. Like, just full of singles. A suitcase? Yeah. A, suitcase? a giant what suitcase. What kind of suitcase? I mean, was it an old tatter the- one? Was it a nice Gucci suitcase? It was probably a, like, a, what do they call it? Tumi? T-U-M-I? You know, the traveler's yeah. brand? Is there it's got any, wheels on it. Is there any other, like, more of a baller way than to treat, like, a house full of whores than to show up with a suitcase full of ones? <laughs> it was to the brim, too. It was ridiculous. So oh, I go I'm back sure, there. I'm sure it looked like, uh, like a movie deal. Like, here's all the money. Like, here's $1.3 million for the Device, the only like, better way to do it is just bucks. treating them poorly with that <laughs> yeah, with that case Smack of money. Smack them in the face with that money. Like, shut up, bitch. Fucking, so I walk back there and I'm like, all right, yeah, man, let me get 20 singles. Here's my 20 or whatever. And he's like, you're a smart man. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, get them now because in about a half hour, they're all going to stick together. I'm like, Jesus Christ, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> they go up to the front and fucking... 
the guy's like, all right, for all you older gentlemen, if you have heart medication, now's the time to take it. And all this shit and fuck goes through this whole spiel. He's like, no cameras because my wife thinks I'm playing poker. And everybody's laughing and shit. They go through and announce these bitches one by one, right? And it's like all the baddest strippers from fucking like Cheeks, Concepts, Diamonds, all that shit. From your local tri-state area. Yeah, so they come out or whatever and fucking, I mean, there's no poles or anything, but it's like in a wedding reception hall, right? So there's just like tables everywhere. And all these hoes are like just come out, shaking their ass naked on the tables and all this shit. Fucking, I'm standing around and one of them's laying on the table just fucking spread eagle and Joe's over there. And he's, <laughs> she's like, five bucks you could put a finger in. And Joe just pulls out like four or fives and slaps them down on her stomach. Calls all these people over and I just see all these dudes just fucking finger blast to this chick. It's ridiculous. <laughs> There's like five dudes with chicken wing from the buffet fingers and like, <laughs> just in there. Like, just, just like, yeah, one minute. <laughs> 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 and nobody's more disrespectful than dirty old white dudes, man. They're like pulling out twenties and fact. shit. Like, I like how angry Luke's act out like pussy finger game is too, because he was just like whole arm and <laughs> like your girlfriend must just have some vagina chafe going on after Dude, it's Bruce fucking, Lee shit. I ruined it. It was it so was there a with good nails, condition, and now it's just apart. a disarray. Yeah. Just swatting it like a, like there's a fly in a wall you're trying to catch and shit like that hitting it on the top of the clit. It just blows in the wind like and shit. It's just all fucked up. But yes, yeah, so all these dudes are just fucking finger Love blasting you, this chick. There's a fucking, there's a young chick and like a 75 year old dude, Super and tight. he's got. <laughs> Sounds like somebody just shuffled a stack of flapjacks. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's the syrupy flapjack. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get this nigga shot, bro. God damn. This girl's on her hands and knees on the table, and she's got so her fucking feet. Hold him. Keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's got her feet over the back of this like 75 year old dude's head, and he's just fucking smiling, and she's fucking pulling his face into her cooter and ass, just like you, like you see in those Jamaican videos and shit. And fucking no, hold on a second. What Jamaican videos? Like where they wrap the their feet around their the back of the head, and then they just smash their face into their pussy and asshole. Yeah. Like that's like the opposite. Oh, of yeah. so okay, aggressive. Okay, okay. It's I didn't know so, it was a Jamaican. Video. You're like, are they breaking their nose or burying it in the asshole? I don't know where it's going. <laughs> okay. The song ends. Okay, fucking this dude. She lets him go, and this dude's just sitting there like a giant fucking grin on his face. And I just like look at him, and he's got a fucking pussy smudge on his glasses. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god. And he smiles and he's got one tooth missing. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> this bitch's labia just with she's got a toothy labia now. It was out of control. That shit is so crazy every year. And again, it happens every year, but they, I guess they didn't have it last year because of COVID or whatever. Can I, you bring your girl with you? No, nah, I haven't gone in a while because again I have a girl now and she would not approve of said one hundred percent would not but, uh, approve. <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, just tell her are you're you going able to go to without play fucking? poker. Is it possible to go and just have it be like a strip club experience and you just watch like a, yeah, but a weird He has party? never attended the whore party while in this relationship. Obviously. Yeah, yeah but, no, uh, obviously. So then, you know, we're fucking hammered after, obviously, because it's free beer and fucking... So me and Budwin... Uh, Budwin's talking shit. I don't remember. He fucking was Man, saying something up. stupid. You completely glossed over Joe making change. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all these old dudes are like throwing fives at these hoes and shit, right? And fucking... Joe's just pocketing these fives and dropping ones. Whoa. Like he went, yeah, he went with like, yeah, he went with like a hundred bucks and left with like two sixty. It was fucking ridiculous, dude. He, it was, uh, Joe's an animal, bro. We were sitting there with one of the girls before they came out and shit, and he's like, oh, "I can't wait to see this bitch, Nick. I bet you got the hamburger pussy. I'm trying to grab that." Like, <laughs> like what the? No. Fuck? Oh my god! And he was like, "Yeah, this shit used to be on a golf course, but we had to." Shut it down and fucking make it in the fucking reception hall because the bitches kept putting putters in their pussies. I was like, oh. what do you mean? Which, and which side? Because if they're designating that it's a putter and not a nine iron, that means that it's not the handle because I imagine all the handles are <laughs> the same size. This bitch is, this bitch is putting the, the actual, you hit the golf ball side of the ball in her pussy. That's this, is what before, that this is before my whore party time. I, I'm not 100% sure, but the <laughs> best thing I've ever seen at the whore party. Where's this at, by the way? How do you uh, get tickets? Actually, not far from here. You just got to know somebody. Ticket master? You just got to know somebody that. Uh, Brown paper tickets? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just got to know somebody that went and then they fucking get you a ticket or whatever. And, you know, the more people that go, obviously, the bigger the funds for the time. That's the stickiest ticket of all time. I don't. You Your blue touch. chew might get you in. 
<laughs> yeah, if I just show up with blue chews, I gave Steve and Tiff a blue chew because Tiff was like, "I'm gonna snort like nine Percocets and fucking <laughs> just eat this you and know, see if my dick still works." Counteract the fucking negative side effects and see how it goes. You know, see, um, it's not that it doesn't work. You get you just fuck for like 17 hours. And also, I didn't give uh, them prescription medication because that's illegal. I'm just kidding. That's that, a joke. You know, yeah, yeah, for the you know, not the that you can't. Just do Lol, it. JK lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> just a <laughs> funny little lying good. fucking fuck. Have you gotten some yeah. greasy lawyers? Yet? No, whatever. I gave them blue chew. Who cares? But uh, yeah. We gave our lawyers blue chew. Shut up. <laughs> the best shit I ever saw at the horror party fucking. It was this dude's bachelor party. So his buddies bought him. You can get like dances for like 10 bucks a song or something crazy. I don't remember. But uh, so this dude's getting a bunch of lab dances. This girl has a butt plug in and fucking. Sick. Usher's Yeah comes on and this nigga rips the butt plug out of her asshole and dances to Yeah, waving that shit above his head. Fucking oh, no. out of control, dude. Like I said, nobody's more disrespectful around naked ladies than old rich white dudes. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah. It's out of control. I remember dude. there was one time when I was, I remember being disrespectful, but I knew that there were two hookers. So I, I was just like, I don't know. You could treat them a little bit more disrespectfully because they're obviously hookers. And they, they didn't care. They like the disrespect. <laughs> so they're, we're, they're sex workers, so you can beat them a little. Yeah. You know, with a garden hose so it doesn't leave, or a phone book so it doesn't go, leave any go bruises. Go ahead and keep talking, piece of shit. He, just, he just means you can be a little rough around the edges. No, right. you can make them bleed a little bit. <laughs> nah, so I was over at, uh, we were having like, when I used to work at Gameworks, everybody up there is just a, 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 just a, a super alcoholic. Like the, the highest level of alcoholism achievable is everybody that worked at Gameworks at the time that I worked there, including myself. And we, we, we couldn't drink there because we were, everybody was such a reckless drunk that they had a rule that like you couldn't drink at the place that you worked. And it wasn't a real rule. It was just a rule that my GM made up so, because people would just get reckless and fight each other and like it'd be baby mama drama going on people trying to fuck each other in front of other people's people so they're like yeah you guys want to do this go across the street to the industry bar which was game time the game time in chevy at super wag the game time in fucking newport that place is awesome you can smoke cigarettes inside and fucking everybody knows your name if you work in the industry it's only industry people only like just like the most like seasoned alcoholics gonna be in there like so nobody's people are gonna get wild but it's gonna be at like two in the morning they're getting wild when the appropriate time not like you're not gonna get some like f some fucking young blood 21 year old in there it's his first time drinking like nah, it's a bunch of seasoned alcoholics that know what they're doing and uh there was one time when we we're in there having like some after the the fireworks party or whatever the fuck because they have the fireworks in the levee and uh we had just worked our nuts off and went down there and we we're already fucking drunk because tom had been feeding us shots all night long and we we're watching the thing and it's like let's go to fucking game time we're all getting tore up completely destroyed drunk and shit like that and i'm out back smoking a cigarette my dude chris is out there the bartender and some of the other bartenders are out there whatever they're showing their titties to each other doing crazy shit getting fucking wildly drunk my dude tyler is like giving me bumps of cocaine in the bathroom it was an awesome night and then fucking <laughs> this dude comes over this is a sleazy looking dude that looks like he's straight out of the 70s but he couldn't have been any more than like 30 years old but it looks like just a sleazy dude from a martin scorsese like out of casino just wearing a a shitty jacket that looks like if he just if you just hit it with something like like dust is gonna come off of it and shit like that i was like like he just got out of his grandma's attic or something and i was just and he's just got two skinny ass girls with big old titties on his arms and they've just got like these these spaghetti straps or whatever he's like hey i'm a I work at the local strip joint. Uh, any of y'all want to come back to a strip club with me? He's like winking at us and shit like that. He's taking his glasses down and winking at us. Just like dusty ass suit on and two fucking like meth heads from Newport. And you were like, titties. yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, I get it. You're a, and I almost said pimp. And I was like, a, and I was like, wait, fight's going to occur if I call him a pimp. You're a promoter. And he was like, I'm glad you said that, brother. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm a promoter. And then he just winked. He took his glasses down and winked again. And I was just like, all right, come here, bitches. And then fucking literally just drunk as fuck, just like had a, a handful of singles and just like crammed them down their shirt. And they're like, thank you. And then they put them in their pockets and just showed their titties to the whole bar. Just like dance like titties out on the whole bar. And I was like, I'm glad that you guys are actually prostitutes. Because looking back on that sober, I was like, that was a really aggressive thing that I did. Just cramming money down some girl's shirt that i didn't know but i mean <laughs> they were wearing i mean yeah they were I, it was pretty obvious what the situation was but yeah that was the i got oddly aggressive with them so there's yeah, you know, a okay. weird story <laughs> <laughs> but be speaking like of aggression before we move on you and Budwin in the bushes uh, at the horror party yeah. after the horror party. It wasn't, a, by the way, not aggressive, just like more. No, you're a dirtbag. We get it. Yeah, Keep going. <laughs> little, I, now I feel bad because I'm like, I didn't hit these girls, but you know. No, nah, you did. It's all right. Keep going, Tiff. <laughs> so, yeah, Budwin went. We got <laughs> Tell us about drunk. how you hit a girl or two. Um, I mean, I've never seen Budwin's dick, but I would assume he's a man. Anyway, so fucking he, 
I don't know, we got like a little pushy with each other, just arguing about dumb it's shit. It's because Budwin never had money and he crashed with us for a long time, which we love him, but yeah, so that does great on the nerves a bit. We start arguing. I don't remember what the fuck we were arguing about. I think I like bought him a lap dance. He told me he's going to pay me back and handle goddamn money or something. Me being drunk. That was a huge deal for some reason. I don't fucking know. <laughs> what was a fifteen dollar lap dance? Yeah, it was like ten or fifteen bucks, and I, they got to start calling him a Jew or some shit. And he is Jewish. I don't know, but <laughs> fucking. So we're in the car on the way back, and Joe's driving us, and he got tired of me talking shit, and he wanted to get me to fight him, so he just called me a nigger. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> we got back. No. We got back to our house. You waited till the house to beat his ass. I was no, like, Budwin. Now I gotta fuck you up. Like what? <laughs> no, that was the you guys. No, had so wait, you're being wildly oh, anti-Semitic right. the Those entire time, things. but the the <laughs> N word plus fifteen. To, you're calling him a kike the entire time, but fifteen dollars and an N word. Yes. Right, it's over, bro. Well, it was just a point. I don't even care for real. It was just the point that he he knew. I knew for a fact he was trying to get me to fight him. So we get back, and I'm like out in the yard, just beating the dog shit out of Budwin, just whooping his fucking ass, dude. My witnessing I of this, love this oh yeah, story this right. my witnessing from, of this was, now, yeah. I was working that entire, so I couldn't, I couldn't go to the party, as per usual. I was working, but like, I had a pretty violent hangover from the night before, so I wasn't, I, you know, I finished working my 15 hour day, got home, and I just sat on the couch and was watching movies. All of a sudden. <laughs> It's probably like, it's like three in the morning, and from where our living room, like our living room was right next to the front door. The front door explodes open, <laughs> and Budwin comes walking in, and he's like, I'm fucking done! Rips his shirt off, and then you just see Tiff's long black arm reach in the door and grab him by the back of the neck. <laughs> like a cartoon? You see an arm come out no, the door? More like it's like Mortal Kombat, and he just air grabbed Get him. He just here. grabbed him and like launched him back over, like back parallel to the ground into the front yard and just dives on him, and it's just fists flying. <laughs> Whenever I hear anyone say just whipping the dog shit, like, I love that phrase. You just know it's a solid ass beat. Oh, just vicious, <laughs> like, ruthless yeah. beat down. Dude. I yeah, love it, was, it. And then the next year, I had I don't remember what he did the next year. I had to whoop his ass that year, too. And then the third year, it was just tradition, so I had to beat him up again. <laughs> We, that year we put fought. the helmet on, stupid. Like was, Tiff, it's, I'm glad we had a good night. We didn't fight or call each other any racial slurs. You're like, to piss out love you call too, a dude. But you know what? Got to beat your ass anyway. All right. So the third year, the one thing he's not telling you is it was just like those, you know, those fighting games where it's like two tiered. You can fight in the foreground or the background. Yeah. And you have to like hit the button to switch. Yeah. Well, imagine there was a hedge bush in between that foreground and background. They started fighting in the foreground. Tiff hit the smash button, knocked him through the hedges, <laughs> dove over the hedges <laughs> to whoop his ass. Did you make like, then, a driver's like in onto him before he did it? To be not and then to... threw him back through the hedge to finish it. <laughs> we had, we had already called amazing. the My friend Adam was there. He tells the story. He was like, uh, I guess one of the security guards from the party came out. like, Because Adam's a huge dude. He's like my height, but he's like 260. I'm 6'5". He's about the same size. And the security guard walks up to him like, dude, can you break this up? And Adam looks at him. He's like... Do you want, I want to stop to? this? Like, no. Yeah. And fucking our Uber about? pulls up that we had called earlier and fucking looks out, sees us fighting in the bushes, and just fucking drives away. He's <laughs> 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 like, nah, uh-uh. Nope. It was, yeah, dude. The, but yeah, so it was tradition. And then I went one more year after that, and uh, he fucking wasn't there that year because he, he lived up in Dayton. And you found him. I almost drove ass. up to Dayton just out of tradition <laughs> to beat his ass afterwards. <laughs> so, but yeah, you nah. gotta respect the oh. hustle of ass beating, man. Sorry to interrupt the podcast. Uh, just go out there in the living room. There's a uh, behind the high chairs, a little. Yeah, go get you a beer, you dry mouth bitch. Yeah, go ahead. Set the mic down. You're good. But yeah, fucking... there's a bathroom in there too. If either of you have to take a piss, it's over and by the living room. Cody anyway. also pisses in the sink. You if could you do that. Be the a fucking cave man with piss. goddamn no sense. Run in your water head. though. No, not on the floor, Steve. You monster. In the actual toilet. That's the next psychopath. step. That's the next step. <laughs> Speaking of it's pit- got carpet. It'll soak it up. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what happens when I spill beers on the regular. <laughs> Did I tell you I've spilled like three more beers since the last time that we've talked? Like every uh, every time that I talk about this on the in podcast, the too? 
What was it in the bed? In the bed too? every time, yeah. Because I just <laughs> I just trust that like my fucking my my was, was shitty Chrissy bed with the dip in the middle of it. Too? Chrissy's always there. Chrissy will be here at some point. She can corroborate this story. But like literally every time that I have a beer in bed, she's like, "You're gonna spill it." I'm like, "I'm not fucking spill it. I'm already drunk. I'm not gonna fucking spill it." And then fucking immediately I set it down. And she's like, "You're gonna spill that beer." And I'm like, "Did you hear?" It's not happening. And I just spill an entire beer in the bed. Don't Did find it. Like it'll get lost under the covers. A whole beer will spill out before I even get yeah. to the thing. Did I hear about what? Did you Did you hear this dumb? bitch talking about why he thinks setting a, a alcoholic beverage in a bed is a good cup holder it's not a good cup like... holder oh i know take yeah. it from me <laughs> no i but what i do is i take the blankets you know and i'll i have a system where you take the oh sorry I'll there's no my system you take Honestly, the covers you and you to... wrap the covers around the base of the can right and then you just sit there and as long as you don't move it is a good cup holder <laughs> let me give you, you a let me give you a move. booze hack <laughs> let me give you a booze hack because i've done this many times flat you need a, sturdy surface no you need a shoe a shoe because you need a have high top shoe, shoes you need a in my high bed. top what? shoe, but have them ex- exclusively for just like beers, like a house shoe, something that never goes have outside of the house. house so you never shoe put for your foot bed in beers, whatever yeah, the like fuck you I, say, old Greg. If I were to take, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I were to take this high top off, I could, God damn it. I could set the beer inside there, and at least it's flat and wide enough that it's not going to knock over too easy. All Don't, right. Why are you fucking putting more nonsense? That's a good idea. In this hem- is it is empty ahead. I got a Doc Martin. How would a Doc Martin work? Uh, it's, it's not a high top, so it wouldn't work too well. What do you mean? It's got it's an eight eye shoe or it's a ten eye shoe. Oh, that's high as top. It's high as fuck top. What do you mean? You know more fashion Doc than Martin I do. Boots or his boots no, as right can right boots here. get, dude? <laughs> What's more high top than a boot? What do you mean? Oh yeah, no, that do you want this? Do you want the heels would, of those? You should have just in said your school bed. shooter <laughs> boots, and then we would have fucking known. Wait, what? You should have just said school shooter boots, and then we would have fucking known. <laughs> I think I have a trench coat somewhere, too. I bet you do. <laughs> yeah, dude. I look like a dude that has a trench coat, though, don't I? You look like a dude who would shoot a school, don't you? Yeah, 100%. I was a dude that would have shot a school up if I had access to guns and bullets. Like, Don't shoot up my school. No, I'm a grown man now. You what? know, I wasn't, it was like a young kid not getting pussy, like just upset at the world, it was just mad and shit like that. How People were you fucking n- with me. Like in high school? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, How not, not really not in high school. It? I looked the way I looked in high school and was still <laughs> somehow getting it. No, I was in high school. I was talking about like middle school and like freshman year. Oh, it was okay. like freshman year. It was like that shit when you don't know anybody and everybody's being a fucking dickhead to you. It was like I could kill all of you in this <laughs> infinitely better world. Like I oh, just you're literally all not my friends. You're all not just gonna suck my dick. Yeah. Then I'm just gonna murder all of you. No, <laughs> the, the ones that were dickheads to me. But then I was just like, wouldn't oh, it be true. just fun to see their faces like trying to run away when I've got the door locked, just like shooting them to death. <laughs> Like man, just watch a blood scatter. It would be fucking sick, dude. This is all that I would think about just all the time, just laughing myself. Like, what are you laughing about? Like, it's just a funny joke. Don't worry about oh, it. Slayer about intensifies. It. I oh, promise. Word. I was thinking about killing people all the time at Coleraine. Yeah, I didn't know. So it's all fine. Now. That's so funny you say that. I have so I much never, more empathy now. I no, I don't. I, don't, I, I couldn't never kill people now. Expected you to be the the shooter. If anyone, I, was I couldn't. Like, I was too much. I was too much of a pussy. Obviously, that Zach kid. You know who What's I'm talking kid? about? Oh, Zach Amon. Oh, okay. We're saying his no, name. I used to yeah, fuck his sister. Say, yeah, I've talked about this all the time. That guy, <laughs> for sure, I thought the whole time was going to kill everybody. Yeah. yeah. Dude, there was one time. So right. me and my friend Joe would fuck with this guy. We would just like... We we gaslighted. Let me tell you after okay, this, I'll okay, tell you what a dirtbag I am now after that this. I'm, now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm realizing that I was the real dirtbag. That happens for sure to me all the time. I understand. Yeah, me cramming, me cramming ones down. <laughs> an obvious <laughs> prostitute, so a like, meth head prostitute. He's like, me, you're a fucking dirtbag. Everybody got quiet. <laughs> he's gonna tell a real dirtbag story, but I got one on the top. It was go such ahead. A dirt bag go ahead. Story. I, got, I got a worse me one. Me and Joe ever noticed that when you realize that you're the dirtbag, you just increase the volume just a tiny bit, and the aggression which you tell the story. So that it's like, it I have funnier. to force to get it out. It's funnier. <laughs> so, Go so on. So fucking, uh, uh, me and Joe, would we, we sat at uh, the same table with him for wood shop. And in our wood shop class, it was like four people to a table, right? And uh, uh, we would sit there next to him, and we would we would just suddenly, periodically. The candle, Steve. While, oh. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> we, would sit, we would sit there and, uh, uh, like... Uh, Thank you. Uh, just like periodically out of nowhere in like moments of silence be like uh, uh, no I'm not gonna fuck your girlfriend <laughs> and he's like <laughs> he would be and like like so legit like out of fear like I didn't say that and we're like 
Yeah, you did. Yeah, like, you like, fucking piece of dude. shit. What are you talking about? We get him so scared. Oh my god. And, and Yo, we was, fuck him up. There was one time he, he had like walked Asperger's away. too. This is like he was like an time. actual retarded kid, by the way. There was one time he was like a for real retarded kid. <laughs> he used to fuck one. his sister and rub it in. Oh, you like there tell was, him about it and shit. <laughs> <laughs> we were horrible people. Was, we were horrible that. people. But there was one time he walked away and he was like, "I'm gonna fucking kill this." He's like, like he said it all fast and like real. Like quiet under his breath, and I heard it, and I was like, "Joe, like he's gonna kill one of us, dude." <laughs> and that was just the end of. The- but like, it wasn't like nah, oh, we're, hold we're on. done hanging out with him now. He hung out with us for like two years against our will. Like he would just he come was, over. He was that we, guy who yeah, was, was just like, us. he was like, you go to a party and you're like, I know that dude, but like I don't know anyone who knows him. Like when you try to talk to somebody who was at the party, like, hey, you know that guy? They're like, no, I don't know him. He's just kind of there. Just, yeah. That's also, who this fucking guy was. Well, I get right? drunk at Joe's basement and just fucking pull out my knife because he would be talking about oh, having a hit list. What are you doing? Well, he was talking about having a hit list and like how we were all on it. And I sat down next to him and I pulled out this knife that my dad gave me. Well, I lost it, but he was used to be like serrated knife. And I put my arm around him and I'd be like, "The fuck are you talking about killing everybody, Zach?" And I whip it out right in his face and I just start combing his hair back with the serrated part. And I was just like, <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about killing people for years, and you're over here talking bullshit about killing people. I bet you don't even I have a plan for you, Zach. And I just be. He's like sweating, oh, getting yeah. inside of like twirling his hair. He, but he was talking about murdering us all. But I mean, yeah, again, he, ticks, he would we twirl his also, hair and he would have like he would have like five pencils. In I was his drunk hands as fuck and shaking I was a, up and down like yeah. all at once. When you said ticks, yeah, I thought ticks. you meant like he would fucking pull his hair, like <laughs> scratch his head, fucking He's ticks would come out and be like, dude. I think those were lice, nigga. Like, I mean, <laughs> oh, there was one time he we were out. Were you done with your Russell, story? Russell made him drink bong water once. <laughs> oh, this one's way more fucked up. He made him drink bong water. There was one time he snitched on. Joe for skipping school to his dad because he was in Joe's uh, basement and yeah. his, his dad came down and and they like ran in the back room to like hide. And Zach just sat there twirling his hair and just he was beating like, a pencil with his hand. And they're like they're back there and then he, uh, Joe, uh, like his dad came down and was like, you better get your ass upstairs and then he, yeah, it was, it was a whole big old deal, oh my man. God. So you mentioned drinking bong water. Yeah, you One of my buddies water. in, uh, well everyone's tasted it before. Uh, You've no, never, yeah, actually, you've never yeah, tasted bong water We took a shot of bong water with tequila so that we Ooh. could get a better shot so one of my, my uncle. We used to do crazy shit. Yeah, yeah dude. One of my friends in college, you RJ, to do that. He, uh, he went back for seconds because he didn't believe he got a fair taste the first time. It's just like RJ. And I think it was for like two smokes. It was for something. He liked his tobacco more than anything else. But like, Facts. I can't believe that this man went back and did that. Didn't you make him smoke a bowl of seeds? <laughs> yeah. we gave, oh, no. dude, all right, so we what? gave like we Chinese gave, firecrackers. No, we gave RJ like, like the trifecta, make, giving him like a fucking like migraine. No, so what happened was <laughs> I had I was working a closing shift in college, and that was before like my current job where I work a million hours. But that was the start of Steve working a million hours. Uh, he came home from a free concert at Ohio State. I think it was Lupe Fiasco. We're like everyone's going to smoke. Underrated, to be honest. He uh, duct taped a bottle of 151 to his thigh, <laughs> and he drank the entire bottle of 151. <laughs> Through a body straw, he's got a straw fucking, like a catheter. No, no, he just unhooked it and just started <laughs> drinking it. But That's amazing. He, uh, I forget whose jersey it was. I don't remember whose jersey it was. There was either, a, yeah. He was wearing a, a football player's jersey backwards. A controversial he's like, figure. He is white, very white, corn-fed yeah. white. Well, Corfet means that you're huge. Th- he was yeah, a big he was guy. Sizable. Okay. There All was right. also a uh, like a big, you know, like party at Ohio State, like a like a block party, you know. So when he was on his way home, he got in trouble there for throwing an empty forty at the back of a riot cop's head. <laughs> <laughs> it smashed on the back of his helmet. <laughs> they got him, threw him in the fucking cop car, took him back home, dropped him off, and were like. Turn your fucking jersey around. Your night's over. So they sent him inside. I was trying to help his drunk ass up the stairs, and he kicked me down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> well, hey, this man just threw a bottle at a cop's head and just got sent yeah, home. Yeah. What the fuck? That's the whitest thing I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. A hundred percent. Tell this. What the fuck so, is that? That, so that shit happened. And he like kicked so what me if down this the was stairs. Tiff? Tiff, what do you think would have happened to you if you had turn uh, around, empty the clip? If you had too <laughs> oh loudly talked God, about, bro. if you had too loudly talked about throwing, a, if you hey, I might thought, throw this bottle, man. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. They probably would. 
they just broke in the bottle and stabbed me with it, took me home, and said they didn't know what happened. If I had to guess. We rescued him, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. We found him bleeding. I don't know. Call an ambulance. (laughs) So, So RJ ended up fucking finally getting upstairs i left him at the top of the landing because he kept trying to like backward like donkey kick me off the back of the stairs <laughs> what a and maniac. he's like a what giant dude so it's like it was like me trying to help tiff up the stairs so he's like got a foot of height on me and rj was like bigger so he had probably 50 or 60 pounds on me because i was like 150 then well also rear kicking down at you correct <laughs> You know, backwards so, horse kick as, uh, as revenge, this was like weeks later. You me clipped and Joe, him and he fell down those very stairs. <laughs> me and my buddy Joe got uh, we got way too high. We made him smoke. We made him do the trifecta. We made him smoke a gravity bong of just seeds. Oh no! After that, a he gravity had sm- bong of seeds. He had to smoke. Tw- <laughs> oh my he had God. to smoke oh twenty God. cigarettes. <laughs> Wrapped once? together with a rubber yes. band. Ra- God, <laughs> yes. No fucking way. <laughs> and then he, then he we should have did this shit to Zach. Then he had to eat a triple butter sandwich. It was just like three pieces of toast with a little bit of butter in between each of them. That's what, what, that's what you call a hood delicacy. <laughs> but he had, to, <laughs> he had to eat it in two bites. Oh, you got butter money? So oh. he sat there and chewed it for the next, like, 40 minutes to try and work up enough saliva to get this thing down. Oh, my God. Jesus man. fucking Christ. It sounds fucking awful. I would not... Ugh. Jesus. But like the cops in the cops at Ohio State are a little different though. Yeah, it's, they, they they just don't give a shit almost. I had one more Zach story that uh I forgot to tell. So there was one time we were out with uh it was me, Sean Moore, and then his girlfriend at the time, Puddles. We called her Puddles because they fucked on the bed one time, okay. and she left a puddle. And we came in there, and he was like, "She this bitch left a whole puddle on the bed," <laughs> and she was over there playing in it like a little kid, like. <laughs> It's like, look at this fucking puddles like a bitch. And then Sean was like, that's her name from now on, puddles. If she wasn't playing in it afterwards, I would have said, She's why didn't now. you? She's wild. She wouldn't sleep for like two weeks at a time. And she would just like, she was like, you want to see a picture of a, of, a, of, a, of a piercing that I did? Like, just blanket way too much. I was like, the fuck? And she, it was all just pussy piercings. She only did clitoris piercings. And she would just show us on her flip phone. Oh, that's just a pussy crazy piercings. Bitch. And they were all fucked up. Like That's a crazy It was bitch. like, oh my God. And this bitch was always just like, like looking at us like you guys seem like you're my friends but i can't really tell it's been a long time since i slept so i just like if i staff one of you guys and if i have consequences for a while then i guess then i'll know that when i was like bitch if you if you even think about stabbing me i will kill you in this apartment <laughs> like i don't give a fuck that you're a woman i'll beat your ass in this apartment you were crazy i watched her i watched her pull knives on people and stab people and punch people and throw liquor bottles at people's heads i was like let me tell you something heather or, i'm sorry puddles oh, i was like oh, let me tell you something puddles if you do if you even raise a fist at me i will beat your ass like a man because i knew she was <laughs> capable of wow she's got pierced pussies in her pig in her fucking he's gonna hit foot. her with the breaker x square square triangle yeah. down square circle four yeah four, dude i'm gonna like, fuck this bitch up breaker. no it's over for her <laughs> nah i'll fucking i'll like scorpion fatality her into the fucking into the spikes down below fuck that bitch anyways we're hanging out with her sean and then it was uh zach and me and i think there was one other person but that person's irrelevant we're out in the middle of the woods maybe it was josh sweeney i think that's who it was we we're in the middle of the woods behind josh's house and he's just playing nirvana well we were all gonna like guitar well we we're gonna get drunk in the woods <laughs> yeah precisely he's got a acoustic guitar he's flipping his hair back talking about killing himself in between verses and shit like that all the time right he's, tip we're calling him a, a fat dutch boy because he looked like the cutest little fat dutch boy like we we always wanted to get josh wooden shoes he would look so good with some little wooden shoes like a little man from Holland. <laughs> Oh man, our little, our little fat little I Dutch boy. Miss old Fat Just, Josh. Yeah, dude. Fat Josh was the old best. Fat what happened? To, now he's all Josh fit was fun and sober and married. Yuck. I hate it. And reformed. Hot girlfriend. Yuck, dude. Go back to smoking Good crack Lord, and want to kill yourself. If you don't sit down <laughs> Please, and eat Josh, a gallon of ice cream. If you're listening, Josh, go back to suicidal and on drugs because you were way more fun than to make fun of specifically. Oh, but uh. No, so he's chilling down there with us, and we're sitting on, like, a log, and then Sean's like, all right, come on, Cody, we're going to break up firewood, and Zach's, like, curling his hair, like, flipping a pencil, like, I want I want to I wanna get uh, firewood with you guys, and we're like, all right, Zach, go get some firewood, and then, like, he's, like, right next to the tent, and Heather's just sitting there, like, talking to herself and shit like that, and she's, like, from a scanner darkly, like, there's bugs all over her and shit, like, she's, like, picking bugs off her skin that aren't there and eating them and shit like that, it's just crazy, I'm, like, just and a- suddenly their ticks started syncing up. Yeah, somehow, yeah, their actual literal ticks, the ticks in his hair, the imaginary ticks all over her body we're sinking up yeah no but so they're two crazies on different sides of the crazy spectrum like violent crazy and just just 
retarded crazy, but fucking uh, born crazy and self inflicted crazy. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, dude, that's what I would go for. Yeah, and then fucking uh, they're both goofballs, just two goofballs hanging out. One violent goofball, one hair twirling, wants to be violent, but just two just hard can't get it done. Goofball. goofball, and then he fucking he grabs the deadest looking, the wettest, deadest looking fucking stump of a tree immediately and pulls the tree out, and it's just termites everywhere, all over crazy fucking puddles just immediately in her hair. She's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Because the, the bugs, bugs got became real, real. real quick. Yeah, they were real at that point. She's like, oh, these are actually good. But yeah. then she got up, and we all look back around while me and Sean are actually, I've got candling, Sean's got logs, and we're walking back, and we're like, what happened? And then there's, he's like, she's like, this motherfucker! Fuck it. I, 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 like, by this point, she's got him up against his neck with a fucking, like, just a, a fucking... And he's just like violent. A sharp shit. object in his eye. Like, hands. She, I don't know what she had, but it wasn't, it was like a piece of metal or like a tin or it was some rusty shit just like up against his eye like talking about how she's gonna a scoop his spike. eye out and we were like nah dude it's cool it's cool it's cool like puddles don't fucking kill him and she's like why the fuck not and i was like oh because i don't want to like uh you know go to jail today you like fucking kill no, people I would right. her in immediately and Sean was like wait she was like fine whatever but uh she was like fucking faggot ass pussy bitch and then just like sat down talking to herself again and then fucking zach's sitting there twirling his hair and then sean was like but he did kind of fuck up like got termites all over shit and i was like you're right zach as punishment go lay down on the termites and he's like but i don't and then we were like nah zach it's as your tribute for her for puddles not carving your eyeball out you're gonna have to lay down on the termites and he's like all right and he's twisting his hair back they and forth. Bud-wind he just him. sat down into the middle of the termite pile and they just crawled all over and he's like can i get out of them now they're they're going on my socks and i was like nah dude 10 more seconds <laughs> He fucking gets bitten in the urethra <laughs> by termites and shit. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, so that was the other Zach story. Sorry. You were god. talking you it's, cra- it's crazy what you could convince people to do just saying it with conviction and confidence. <laughs> Accurate. Like, this motherfucker did not have to go lay in the goddamn termites, but you were like, dude, I don't know, man. You got fucking termites all over, bro. It's only right that yeah. you're fucking <laughs> I like, think I think we had like our friend Brandon smoked basically all of his cigarettes. Like if he was if he was around oh, and it he, was Trevor Corey, but instead of Trevor Corey, it was just like Zach smokes. <laughs> yeah, like Zach smokes, let's go. And he would just give him a cig from the pack like every time, dude. That's fucking hilarious, dude. We were pieces of shit growing up. Now think back about all these stories. Just, oh, dude, I am as well. We definitely some years were. Back some years back, I hooked up with a uh, um, an old ex of mine that that also went to uh, Resurrection. My old catholic uh grade school st mike's she, baby and she's like she's telling me like i still see michelle and like all these girls from back then at, at that school and she's like you know michelle like hates you a lot and i'm like why she's like you bullied the fuck out of her for like years on it i was like did i really and she goes yeah you don't remember you and eric just making fun of her i was like i definitely do but i just you don't remember you raped her fun. twice in that <laughs> in the back of the no, auditorium no no he was like Disclaimer, oh yeah I did rape this her. was a catholic school <laughs> so it happened so it, so it was legal <laughs> dude oh it was God. it was fucking great man the rape jesus no, no. <laughs> oh my god oh no, no. oh my god no so we ripped on this girl so michelle like you raped she, on this girl <laughs> what <laughs> yep so <laughs> oh you heard it here first folks so uh, uh she came into our grade uh when we went into second grade she was a class ahead of us but she came into our class and we we're like oh this bitch failed like we we knew right away like oh this bitch failed you she could failed. have actually you failed we were we, we gave got her the a you failed, failed like thing. wave of like just cars in the air yeah, that says you she failed she could have well, actually see, just been like the like born in September where it's like do you want to be the oldest or the youngest person in your grade and she just happened to say oldest and you were like oh she's already uh what grade was it second second said make you what like 8 Give or take. You're like, oh, this bitch is nine. She <laughs> failed. <laughs> You're old as fuck. Why are you in this grade? I think mo- Holy shit. Most dudes at some point in their life, whether they were the one, like, uh, they were dicks to other little kids. It doesn't oh, matter dude, if you got terrible. picked on. You probably picked on someone. I picked sure on somebody was. way weaker than me. I think what be- I did. Yeah, well, yeah. I got picked on, then I was like, who's the even weaker kid? I was best friends with Eric Walker, and he was he was like... He was the popular kid in class, right? He was like, there was like 10 kids in my class, all eight years there, or nine years. Kieran in eighth grade, there's like 10 kids, maybe 12 the whole time. 
and he's he's Is good. It? Yeah, he's funny. He's good at sports. He's do, he's he's the only one who's getting goals at any of our teams, even though our teams are losing in every sport, soccer, baseball, whatever. And he would just like start ripping on these people, and I'd be like, Yeah, I'm, I'm with him. That's yeah, what, that's, yeah, I'm ripping on because like we would walk to school together because his older brother was best friends with my older brother. So we would just walk together every morning from like kindergarten to eighth grade to school and we would just talk shit and then we would get to class and talk shit about other people. Is this the schwung on him, brother? Yeah, man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> schwung on him. Schwung Is schwung on him, on him still in jail right now? No, but guess what? I got news on schwung on Is him, Is he brother. actually Please. Speedway Please. Steve? All right, so uh, the no, back he's up. not. I, I, I recently Luke has a straight criminal hood ass brother that yeah. like we only found out about two years into the podcast, which <laughs> should have been day number one like podcast conversation. But Luke waited. I gotta two keep years some things up my sleeve, right? I just don't realize how fucked my life is in certain aspects. Fair so enough. like they just stay buried. What's the news but, though? Uh, recently, I've been getting phone calls from a private number, but they leave uh, voicemails, and I listen, and it's uh, calls for my brother from, like, a lawyer firm saying there's, like, charges pressed on him, and <laughs> they're, like, wanting him to come pick up his papers for the case and shit. So is he, like, on the I don't know. Wh- I guess. Why I don't are know, you maybe. these voicemails, I don't know, because I don't have homie's number, so, like, the most I can think is, is my dad gave him my number and was, like, call your brother and sister sometime, and then he never called me and just used <laughs> me for, like... You put like, your number down. Like papers down I, and shit. Like, I bet he like just that. put your name down as like contact in case of emergency. Yeah. I like, haven't talked to that dude in seven years, Steve. <laughs> can we have him on the podcast? Fuck. Absolutely not. Why not? Not from even a through a Zoom away call. Place, no, yeah, from maybe. a Zoom call. I'm not letting this man in my house. No, I doubt he has the technology for Zoom. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, if you had him on a Zoom call, you might end up being an accomplice to a crime. So maybe it's not for the best. He's like mugging an old lady in the middle of the fucking he's, podcast. No, he's in someone's house that he's robbing. <laughs> yeah, he's using, he's he's like, using their laptop. Right, to, so I'm yeah, the episode this like, is mine now. Ask what you got to ask. I got to go quick. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, it's never a good feeling when you get those fucking caught, like the, the little message that says like you got to accept the charges. Oh, yeah, or any yeah, of that yeah. Yeah. Dude, I used to get that. Me and Budwin used to get that shit all the time from fucking some jail in Batavia. Oh, and, uh, is it from? Yeah. Oh, okay. So fucking, I knew this dude, and he was super cool. Like we were good friends and shit, right? <coughs> and uh, we'd hang out, you know, get down, whatever, all this shit. He grew a bunch of weed in his basement, and he started smoking meth at some point in of us hanging out. Heavy so, escalation. And so, uh, yeah, he fucking had a whole basement full of it or whatever. And he started smoking meth. He had like a paranoid episode. He had a basement full of weed, not the meth, yeah, but he no. had a lot of meth. Yeah, so he, he was smoking okay. or whatever. He had like a paranoid fucking episode when he was smoking meth one day. He thought that he some girl accused him of rape at a subway and like what? that he had a court case or something. At so a he, subway, the, the restaurant yeah, sandwich yeah, shop? Yeah, in the or, back of a okay. subway, yeah. And I don't know where this came from or any of that. He swears the cops press charges on him. He goes to the. He takes two hits of acid and goes to the police station. What would what? What are you talking about? I would be confined <laughs> in prison with while I'm tripping They're like, balls. That sounds like something you <laughs> would do. He, that does sound like the this next man, level. Like you know how people escalate the, with like he hit the pookie and took two tabs. And was like, guess I'm going to talk to the police now. You, yeah, but that's what you're gonna do one day, like Steve said, because you know how people escalate with like so like you know how like serial killers have to keep getting like crazier and crazier as their murders go. That's how you're gonna be with your acid because yeah. you're like I watched all the scariest movies I on acid I locked myself in a I'll dog cage with, with a wild pit bull what's next horror well, movies of his prison. neighborhood cat city murders the pretty craziest... soon he's gonna have to work his way yeah exactly exactly the craziest just thing I'll do with acid, acid the is like boof eventually. it dude I'll boof it <laughs> I've not? already done that it's not that great right. so anyway he goes it's and fucking they're like what the hell are you talking about like we don't you, we see you have a past record but there's no new charges against you or whatever he doesn't believe him he argues with him he comes back I stopped talking to him at this point because fuck all that bullshit. Yeah. After I fixed the wall, yep. Yeah. Cut all content. Yeah. So we, oh my God. So then like two years go by and my buddy sends me, like I get a Snapchat from him and it's, it's like, yo, check out your boy. And I'm like, what the fuck? I open it. It's a fucking news article. This dude apparently tied his girlfriend up, beat the shit out of her, burned her with a torch and then shot her. Yikes! And fucking, Did he kill her? Or just no, shot no. Her? She, he shot her, and she had to have her fucking spleen removed. Oh, yeah, dude. So he's in prison for ten years. He using a, he had weapons under disability because he had already gone to prison before that. And fucking, they gave him three years for that, and then dropped the attempted murder, gave him felonious assault, and he's in for ten years. I'm like, man, 
that's all you get for that like you get you what get, yeah it's fucking crazy and this for was a good dude before another he started yeah, straight up and God he tried to damn attempted his, murder and everything else his lawyer tried to fucking claim it was like amorous role play and shit it's like no bro amorous no part role of role play yeah, there's what no the there's fuck? no tortures involved in that like what the fuck are you talking is about is there incineration kink that i'm just unaware of <laughs> So don't smoke <laughs> meth, kids. Don't smoke meth. Like, this motherfucker was cool before that. Before he started smoking meth, he was a good dude. I swear to God. He was like a genuine homie. Nah, I'm he started smoking meth. I never meth. tried meth. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking makes insane, me feel, dude. Makes me feel real good, though, when you I never tried You say that, meth. but you fucking eyeballed it once. Someone probably offered it, and you're like, oh. No one's ever offered it to me. I mean, I might have taken it and thought that it was cocaine. I've done a lot of cocaine, but yeah. never meth. I mean, I'd be honest about it if I took meth. Do I seem like somebody that would lie about doing meth? I, I'll tell you right. If, no, but you look like someone who would do meth. Yeah, why? that's why I never tried it. Why is there a like, burn-up light bulb right, in the corner? That's why I haven't done it. <laughs> what? Why is there a burn-up light bulb over there, Cody? What the fuck? I smoked DMT out of a light bulb one time. That might have actually been mad. I fucking want DMT so bad. Have you ever done it? I no. I I got to what? lightly last hit, story, and then we got going to, to the lightly Patreon. hit a uh, uh, an already burnt bowl. So I didn't. I I I didn't get like the full effect at all, at all. It's pretty crazy, bro. I wanted it's so some bad. wild shit. You definitely need DMT to slay story. a demon or two. I'm, dude, I'm I'm in. Welcome me to the eighth dimension. I want to hear like Tiff's I'm story in. about I doing it though. Do it. I've done it a bunch of times, man. When I was younger, right. I used to do a bunch of wild shit. And we, fucking, <laughs> we were a little out there. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, it's like I I don't know. The best way I can explain it, like, so you'll hit it once and you're still kind of there. You get a little body rush, like, but like when you do when you take acid, but like immediately, like as soon as you hit it, it just like flows through you. You hit the bowl again. It's like Tiff, you don't right even know the, the bowl is. Yeah. And fucking, it's like getting shot through a kaleidoscope. And then I like look around the room and like fucking little mushrooms pop up and grow and shit. Just fucking wild shit. Like symbols that I have no idea what the fuck they are, but you can kind of understand them. And it lasts like 10 minutes and then you're good. That's kind of like you're completely the, good. That's kind of like the after. Like my experience, like when you actually are into like, holy shit, I'm at the top of this. Like I'm peaking right, right now. Right. But like the actual very first like reaction at least from what i was doing was it's almost like you're playing a video game and you get like flash banged or ko'd everything's yeah. kind of like super hazy and you're like okay well this is no problem and then you like lift your hand up and you're like oh no yeah. <laughs> and it's then crazy, you're gone <laughs> some wild shit i yeah. never got the blast off when i smoked it out of that light bulb i've told the story a million times on a podcast but i smoked it and my buddy had just like his mom was just like well, I'm going to Kentucky. You want to come with me? No? Okay, well, then the apartment's yours for uh, the next uh, two months until you get evicted, and uh, good luck. And he was like, oh, fuck. All right. So he sold all of his furniture, and, like, everything's gone. So we're just sitting on, like, mattresses, and the girl he was dating at the time was just, like, so selling DMT, piles of DMT yeah. and Molly, and she was just, they would just have, like, fucking sacks of Molly, like, shit that would put you in prison forever, and then they would just smoke DMT out of light bulbs. And my buddy Adam was, like, on a 10 strip, like, smoking DMT, and you have to do the three hits in and out type of shit. That is but not I tried a to do it time. one time out of that light bulb, like, you're smoking and meth and then i hit it once and i'm on an air mattress and i just started feeling like i was gonna levitate off the air mattress like the shit was coming up like i, I it sounds like a, a person lying about making up a but i swear to god no, it was yeah, like it's really a yeah. magic carpet coming down around me and i was like this is way too intense fuck that and i just i like just threw the fucking light bulb in my hand i was like i don't want to experience it i don't care that fuck sounds this. absolutely terrible it was horrific and i was just like and then just everything got fuzzy like i was about to go into a k-hole and i was like absolutely not no, nah, fuck that. how you do you said, get to the point you where said you said adam did a 10 strip and was smoking this stuff? Adam did 10 strips and did everything. That Adam, died. Annihilation. Adam died on a 10 strip. Oh, he took know, a 10 strip and drowned to death on it. Yeah, that's the only... Some people fucking are like, I'm going to take two hits, I'm going to take three hits. Adam was like, I'm going to take a 10 strip, and that was his baseline. Yeah. People do that So shit, maybe man. when we cut over to the Patreon, we should... T- <laughs> We should tell them about the van. That's a good, hey, hey, perfect tease. Let's tell the, we're 47 in, let's do the ad Go to the van like, hey, tell I got to shut the fuck up. (laughs) Patreon after this. The Juggalos will like this story. This episode, (laughs) as all episodes, is sponsored by the amazing, the talented, the incredible, the long dick wizard, Anthony Tank Mansfield. He runs the Neil to No One brand. If you want to get an awesome choice of glassware, custom art starting at $30, t-shirts, and fucking other dope-ass shit, including enamel pins, go to uh, K-N-E-E-L-T-O-N-O-O-N. Ne.com or Neil to No One spelled the same way on his Instagram. Hit him up, DM him, get all your cool shit. Check out his podcast. What you into? I've done it. Luke's done it. Pat's done it. Fucking a bunch of people have done it. Uh, go and check out the uh, the episode uh, shipping and sipping. It's about a legal beer trade. It's fucking awesome. Uh, 
I've also had Tank, like, I've commissioned him for a few pieces of artwork. One of them was actually for my dad for Father's Day. He never disappoints. He always lets you know what's going on through the process of it. Yeah. I highly recommend doing it. We got to get a starts at $30, at least from back in the day, it started at $30 plus, you know, depending upon size and complexity. So please get some artwork from Tank. Yeah, man. We still haven't got a bass determined design from him. We're fucking up. He did one for Clint, but we got to actually get one. Go ahead. We are also sponsored by Scarlet Babe and Smoke Shop. If you guys want the best, the greatest, top of the line, quality glassware, you guys want to head over to uh, Scarlet Babe and Smoke Shop. They've got everything. Bowls, water pipes. They have everything. They got screens. They got... uh, uh, what what kind of THC? Uh, they got Delta Nine Delta THC. 9, they got yeah. kratom. They got fucking like any type of like smell proof bags so that you can put anything that they you want incense. in there. They got incense. They got an excellent cheeses. collection of incense. They got odor de- uh, odor eliminators. And Delta Nine THC, by the way, it'll get you high. And so Delta kratom. Eight. Like I'm Delta not gonna Delta Eight. Delta Eight. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it'll get you high. It's not like CBD. I mean, CBD has its place, but I mean, you want to actually get high legally before all the shits like medically available. Fucking Delta Eight, it's fantastic. You get high available. as fuck. Yeah, recreationally available. And if you want, uh, if that sounds interesting to you, go to one of their two locations. They have one at nine three seven Mama Street, Newport, Kentucky four one zero seven one, and the other one at one one four two four Montgomery Road, Cincinnati, Ohio four five two four nine. And if you tell them you're a bastard, you'll get fifteen percent off your order. Fuck yeah, Tiff, Steve, any plugs before we get a Patreon? Uh, uh if you want to see something funny. Make sure that you followed Richard Infante. How do you spell Infante? I N F A N T E on Facebook. All right. Okay. Why? Give us a little little teaser. What is that? Well, who's Richard Infante? It's, it's it's Dick Baby. He's just a troll. <laughs> I wonder who's running that account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Richard Infante. Hit him up. See God what's see what's going on. Go to the Bastard Server really Facebook just group. Ma- like add him for friends so that he'll has he'll have better clout when he goes to troll these bigger groups. We don't plug this enough, but go to the Bastard Sermon Facebook group. That's actually how we know you guys. I mean, it's through also yeah. through Pat, but the only reason that but we know you at all on any level is through the Bastard Summer Facebook group. Go yeah. and check it out. There's a bunch of fuckheads that post crazy shit and they get into arguments. Sometimes they get into political ar- arguments and I want to kick them in the and nutsack. shout out to Jojo uh, Kai for uh, tagging me and letting me know when all of those posts get out of line. Yeah, so we can get rid of them because yeah. fuck that shit. Appreciate really, guys, you. just interact with us because it's going to do nothing but make the show better. Yeah, 100%. And like, I have a good time tuning in every day. That gotta, brightens up my Monday. We gotta That's do what more, I do on Monday at work. Thanks, man. We gotta do more questions in the thing. If you guys want to hear the rest of the conversation with us, uh, the Tiff and Steve, the van story that they're about to tell us, go to <laughs> www.patreon.com uh, slash the bastard sermon and check it out. All right, fuck faces. Goodbye.